Good morning everyone. I am taking the easy way out this week again because I don't have time to write reviews. So I'm just going to show you and talk a little bit about the books that I've just read, I'm currently reading or will embark upon very shortly. So first of all, two books which I have reviewed, um, but you will have to go to other sites to find them. First of all, Anti Tuaminen's The Man Who Died has been reviewed on Crime Fiction Lover. Now, Anti is a Finnish writer uh, who's best known for his rather dark fiction, rather bleak, um, dystopian sort of um, writing. Um, however, this one is quite a change of pace. It has a lot of humour, although quite dark humour. It's a sort of bittersweet story as well that will make you think and feel the transience of life and betrayal and relationships and so on. But at the same time, it is really laugh out funny. It's got all the feel of Billy Wilder comedies of um, sort of mad capers of the 1930s Hollywood black and white films. So it's it's a delightful book and um Auntie is a delightful writer, so heartily recommended. The second one is um, from Israel, Eshkol Nevos, Three Floors Up. This will be reviewed soon on Necessary Fiction. The review will be coming up soon. It's a um, story that has been done before to a certain extent, so uh, the life of the inhabitants of an apartment building, so um each section is dedicated to one of the floors and you get insight into the life of one of the protagonists from that floor um so not new in concept what is interesting is a the characters are very well done very well rounded b they're always seeking to justify themselves they're actually writing or communicating in some way with a friend or somebody close to them and trying to explain what is going on in their lives. Um, so, so it's an interesting way of presenting it. You don't see them from the outside very much. Um, and, um, and what's interesting is that there is also, I feel, an Israeli background to it and Israeli specificity in that the people are from very diverse backgrounds. You're never quite sure what experiences they've been through, what they've done in their life. You don't quite know whether to trust them, whether you want to know more about your neighbours um, or not. So, so it's, it's an interesting and intriguing picture of modern day Tel Aviv. Um, I also read some other crime fiction books. Um, another favourite is Eva Dolan. And this is a book coming out in January 2018, but I was lucky enough to get a preview copy. Eva is one of my favourite uh, crime fiction authors writing today um, for her hate crime series set in Peterborough. This is a standalone, so not part of that series. And it takes place in London and it's about female friendship, it's about uh, protesting, um, it's about um, police informants, uh, revenge against men. Um, so it's quite political as well, but um, very different from her hate crime series. Um, certainly one to keep an eye out for um, and, and with some surprising twists along the way. So this is how it ends by Eva Dolan. Another book set in uh, London, but in the 1970s, is this debut novel, Deadlands, by Lloyd Otis. Now, uh, Lloyd was previously a journalist and crime fiction reviewer and uh, interviewer. And this is his first book. It does suffer some of the debut novel um, sort of flaws in that there is perhaps a bit too much telling rather than showing um, and the storyline can get a little bit muddy at times but it's a it's an intriguing book and I will be interviewing Lloyd 
for um, New Talent November on Crime Fiction Lover, and I want to find out why he chose the 1970s, although I think he's too young to actually remember them. So the final crime fiction book that I've read is Adrian Magson's Rocco and the Nightingale. Now, I love the series written by Magson um, about Lucas Rocco and uh, his life in the 1960s Picardy in France. Um, I love the atmosphere that he manages to recreate. I love Rocco himself as a character, um, the sort of more gentle pace that it has compared to some of his action thrillers. So I was delighted to see that uh, there's a new book coming out um, very soon. And um, it's, um, it's perhaps slightly more predictable than some of his other books in the series, but it's nevertheless a very good read if you love France as much as I do. And now to some future reads. I've been talking about this one a lot. Miklos Banfi's They Were Counted, the first in the Transylvanian trilogy series. Because it is thick, I have not had the power of concentration to embark upon it, or rather I've read the first few pages and then I laid it aside for some others that required more urgent reviews. But I am looking forward to reading it and I will dedicate time to it in the near future. Uh, another one by contrast, which I've had recommended, is Ariana ha Howitch, uh, Die My Love, by Charco Press. This one takes place in France, but is actually um, written by a Mexican, I believe, a Mexican writer. So it is very, or is it Argentinian? Yes, Argentinian writer, sorry, Argentinian writer. And it's um, supposed to be quite hard hitting and intense. And Charco Press are doing a great um, uh, series of books translated from uh, South various South American countries. So I'm looking forward to this one. And then finally, one that I just couldn't resist because of its setting and its topic. Uh, this one won't be coming out until January, I believe. Um, it's Zen and the Art of Murder by Oliver Bottini, um, a German writer. It is set in the Schwarzwald, in the Black Forest, but uh, there are um, elements uh, linking it to Japan. There's a Japanese monk involved there. Um, trailing through the snowy landscapes of, as you can see here on the cover, of uh, around Freiburg. So I like the area. It was uh, the place where we used to go for Christmas markets when we were living in, in or near Switzerland. And I like German authors and the Japan connection just made it truly irresistible. So I have no idea what it's going to be like, but I look forward to reading it and reporting on it. So these are my um, current books. I'm sure my plans will change considerably. Um, I hope that this hasn't been too painful viewing. I'm trying to stick to under 10 minutes and um, apologies again for not doing this in writing, but I am just running out of time. However, this coming week will be the launch of the magazine that the literary journal that I am now working for. So I hope to be able to report something about that. And also today, later on today, this afternoon, I'll be going to the South Bank Centre for World Poetry Day celebrations and listening to a lot of poets reading their work. So again, I hope to report on that. Thank you. Bye bye. Have a great weekend.